Are you willing to cut off any relationship that is not aligned with your purpose? Let's talk about it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Thanks for joining me. Wednesdays with Yaya, with my beautiful wife, Yaya. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Nice having you here. Thank you. Are you willing to cut off any relationship not aligned with your purpose? Ooh, let's talk about it. Are you willing to cut off any relationship not aligned with your purpose? I think once I understand what my purpose is, that's, that's first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And then I can figure out how that person fits or does not fit into my life. But the first thing I need to do is understand what my purpose is. So the answer would be yes. So you're willing to cut off any relationship? I am now. Mm -hmm. You are now? Yes. Now, there's a twist to this. And I think try to See, catch you off guard. Here we go. But when I say relationships, and when people say relationships, I think they automatically think about relationships with other human beings. But hey, this is about relationships with food, with, <laughs> with, with, with substances, alcohol, drugs, uh, you know, different different liquids, Dr. Pepper. You know what? I'm just saying. Oh, we just don't. No, I'm just saying. Dr. Pepper, right? Uh, relationships with uh, with money. Relationships uh, with cigars. Cigars. Hey, with cigars. So it's a relationship with anything that is not aligned with your purpose. And when I say not aligned, uh, it impedes on you moving forward with your purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, are people willing to really cut off those relationships? And my belief is not most people. Most people are not equipped or willing to cut off relationships, uh, all relationships, to pursue the purpose. And uh, for different reasons. You know, uh, I just don't think people are just that passionate about pursuing their purpose. Or discipline. Or discipline. And um, I say just not that passionate. I, I think I think most people really can't see beyond today. And uh, most people live a selfish life. It's all about them. And they don't see the bigger impact they have on society, on people's lives, on the world. Uh, just they don't see the bigger picture. They can't. They can't see uh, the forest amongst the trees, you know. And so uh, they live for today, and uh, and which isn't totally a bad thing, you know. I, I like. I live. I live uh, sparingly in three worlds, you know. When it's uh, when it's needed. Right, was relevant to what I'm doing, what I'm pursuing. You know, I can live in the past, present, and future, depending on the relevancy it plays in, on what I'm doing in my life. You know, I know a lot of people say don't live in the past. Well, I'll, I'll visit the past. Uh, not, not for uh, to be depressed or having uh, or be down or to whine. Mm -hmm. But for a lesson, for a lesson or to reflect on, hey, man, I can get through this today in the present because this is what I experienced in the past. Yeah, I defeated a giant in the past. So I'm faced with another giant in the present. I can do it and I'll reflect on the past. I do that all the time. I'll reflect on the past and remember, man, you you uh, you overcame that. You fought that. You won. And so you can do it. You can do it. Right. Yeah, this current issue is nothing. And you know, I'll live in the future, not due to anxiety, but again, if I'm going towards something, trying to climb something, and uh, 
it may be uh, intimidating, right? You know, I can look in the present and say, man, you can do it. Look in the past, what I did presently, and say, hey, I can do this in the future. Mm -hmm. and give me that confidence. But going back to what the topic is, man, that's so hard to really cut off relationships because um, we have a relationship with people. Yeah, you're right. But the first thing we think about is, is, is closing the relationship with people. Right. Right. Which is where I was going with it. Right. And that's one aspect of it. But we, we have some unhealthy relationships with things. You know what I'm saying? Just with things, uh, habits, and uh, that we picked up over time. And so, you know, I look at people. It's almost like closing out a relationship is, is starts in an unhealthy relationship with something else. It can. It can. Uh, if you don't take the right steps and have the right intentions. You know, so I, I've seen people uh, give up. Uh, let's say they give up uh, smoking marijuana, but then they take up drinking heavily. Right. Or they give up alcohol, drinking alcohol heavily, then they take on something else. Or they give up cigarettes, and then all of a sudden you see them gaining a bunch of weight. Because the cigarettes, to an extent, have been curving their weight. Right. But then they start eating big portions often, and now they gain all this weight. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah, you got to be cognizant of, like, yeah, I'm giving this up, but I can't create an opening for something else to come in and fill that void in a negative way. Right. Right? It got to be filled with something positive. And so, uh, you know, when you do give up something, there is an opening, but you got to fill it up with something. So, you know, if I give up uh, uh, drugs, uh, someone gives up drugs, hard drugs, you know, fill it. Doing some ch charity work, giving, giving back, coaching, uh, maybe go vegan, those types of things. But there's definitely an opening, right? Because anytime you extend, you give up something, mm -hmm. right? There's an opening. Right. Yeah, and they teach you that in boxing. So anytime, anytime you punch, there's an opening, right? In idle mind. <laughs> right. What happens with an idle mind? That's all we have to. Hey, that's a good point. You know, idle mind is the devil's workshop, and uh, got to stay busy. And that's one thing. Uh, I know I mention this a lot, and I'm going to continue mentioning it. The book Palmer Christie. One of the women I interviewed, and her story told in a real life fictional way. Uh, one thing she said, I won't say her name, one thing she said is when she gave up drugs, she had to find something constructive to do. She said when she went to rehab and she learned that she had to find something constructive to do and stay busy. Mm -hmm. So to this day, and this is an older woman, mm -hmm. to this day, she stays busy mm -hmm. and she has to stay active. That's just her thing, man. That's her Achilles heel. That's the thorn in her side that she knows that she has to stay active or she may relapse. And that's so a, that's, that's, that's discipline and smart of her. Right. Yeah. That's, a, that's a very important lesson to learn. Yeah, yeah. Um, with self. You know, I think a few weeks we talked about, I can't remember what title it was or video it was, but I mentioned that... Uh, this, this this chick I was dating back in the day, after listening to a few of my stories, man, my life stories, just in conversation, she had pointed out that I had uh, always been the one to leave the relationship with women. No one has left me, right? Right. And I didn't really realize that till she pointed out, and so I did some deep diving after that as to why is that the case. But... Today, I was like, you know what? That could be, on the surface, a negative thing. You know, uh, 
having some some uh, issues and, and and leaving the relationship maybe too early or prematurely, uh, or just being that one to pull the trigger, right? But on the flip side, not having an issue with cutting off relationships can be a positive thing too, mm -hmm. if it's done righteously and for the right reasons. Because there's some people that have an issue, have a problem cutting off relationships and will be in relationships far too long and they become detrimental to them, which I've never had that issue. So, <laughs> right? So do you think you do you think your issue could be where you may have seen where the relationship was 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 taking a turn and maybe you left first out of control? No. Nah. No, I, I haven't left any relationship that I regretted. I've never had a, I've never regretted any relationship I, I've left. Uh, so this is kind of getting off topic. That's not where I wanted to go with it. But uh, the thing is, once I see certain stuff, you know, I'm the one to talk, tell you, hey, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. You know, change this. If we're going to work, hey, this ain't digging this. And then, hey, after a while, I cut it off. I don't think most people would do that. You know, uh, listen, now, I, I'm not going to live uh, or be involved with anyone or anything. I don't care if it's food, cigars, alcohol, people, uh, doctrine, uh, religion, anything for a number of years that I don't feel like it's feeding me or pouring into me. Mm -hmm. That's just me. I know I don't have, uh, physically have an eternity to live. So I got to make most, most of this time and got to cut off certain things. Not just people, but things. things. Yeah. So I, I, I've never had an issue with that. Yeah. But, uh, I think the hardest thing for people to do is cut off family members. Uh, cut off family members, siblings, and you know, I have a whole different take on that whole thing. Uh, everybody that's your earthly family is not in your spiritual family. Right. Right. And they're not aligned with your purpose. And everybody that's connected to you through blood doesn't want the best for you. Right. I know that may be hard for some to accept and swallow, but that's just the truth. That's the truth that you could be connected through blood, but not spiritually. Right. You know, Cain and Abel showed us that. Uh and so uh, sometimes we have to disconnect also with things within ourselves, you know, the yeah. pains that we're holding on to. That's, it could be it could be a satisfying relationship, right. a good feeling to hold right. on to pain. Right. And right? it doesn't mean there's any love lost by closing the door. But that person has served a purpose. Right. It served a purpose. The and, season is up. The time is up. Yes. But another side to that is maybe the season is up. The time is up. And so we're disconnected because we're not in pursuit of the same thing, right? Headed in the, in the same direction. Mm -hmm. So there's a disconnect. But we can reconnect at some point, possibly, if we get in line once again. So yeah, it may be a, a separation. Mm hmm a disconnect mm -hmm. for years, 10 years, 20 years. And then somehow we come back together and we reconnect. So, you know, uh, don't burn any bridges that don't need to be burned. Uh, disconnect respectfully. You know, there's a way to connect to people respectfully. There's a process. There's also a way to disconnect from people and cut off people respectfully. And there's a process to that also. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a that's a that's a science, that's a process to killing. 
There is. And there's a process to birthing. People don't think about that. Wow. There's a process. So uh, even back years and years, centuries ago, uh, when people would fight, would take the, the Africans or the Indians to fight, there was a process and there was a respect. It wasn't senseless killing in their eyes. There was a respect and there's an honor to even your opponent and to your enemy. And there's a way to do things even with killing off things. And there's a way to do things with birthing things. Yeah. So that doesn't have to be bitterness. That doesn't have to be uh, anger, right? Because we're disconnected, All right? So, you know, we experienced some things back in the day where you had some issues with some family members and they did some things. But one thing I told you, I said, you know, because you wanted to retaliate. Well, and I that's, understood. Uh, that's the natural. <clears throat> right. That's a natural reaction, emotion. But because the emotions were doing. Right. Right. All this. Everything was I, I was caught off guard. I was uncomfortable. And that's understandable. Uh, but as a husband, as a leader, it's up to me to be a logical person, to be that sound-minded person, mm -hmm. and to control emotions. If I'm emotional like you, man, we'd probably we be in jail. Of, right. We'd be in jail, right? So, but at times there needs to be emotion, right? There right. needs to be a balance. But in that situation, I had to be the logical person say, hey, nah, nah, this is how we're going to deal with it. This is how you do this. And one thing I said, I said, what you want to do, you want to be blameless. I said, when you, when you cut this off, when you disconnect, you want to be blameless. Don't respond how they respond. Right. I said, because this thing is going to come back around. You said that. You're going to be reconnected. I said, watch. I said, give it time. Yeah, you reconnect it. I said, but what's going to happen is you don't want to put yourself in a position where you could be blamed and you'll have to apologize. And you didn't have to apologize when you were reconnected. Mm -hmm. They apologized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And you didn't have to ask for an apology. It resurfaced. It wasn't ugly. It was uncomfortable. It was, yeah, you're right. You're right. But if you had reacted how they, you had matched them, matched their energy. Maybe you never reconnect. Right. You, if you did, you definitely would have to apologize. Also. Oh yeah. It just would have been ugly. Oh yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you know, uh, you gotta be willing to do that. And that reminds me of a story. I think we tell this. I tell you the story often that uh, for my Christian brothers watching, <laughs> I'm, uh, I love y'all. I'm not a Christian in that sense, but. Uh, Shout out to my Christian brothers. So in the Bible, you know, there's a there's a passage where Jesus was talking to the disciples uh, outside. And Jesus' mother and brother appeared. And, uh, you know, the disciples said, hey, your mother and brother are here. You know, and Jesus said, who is my mother? Who, who, who are my brothers? These, this is my mother. These are my brothers pointing out the disciples, mm -hmm. you know, people, you know, willing to do the will of my father, basically. So people align with his purpose. That's his, that's his main family. The spiritual family takes precedence over the earthly family with all due respect, right? Mm -hmm. With all due respect, your purpose comes before this earthly stuff, right? Now that's not saying he didn't love them. But hey, we got to keep things in proper order, right? What's right is right. What's out of line is out of line. Now, fast forward, letting you know there was no disrespect. There was no disrespect. When he was on the cross, he saw his mother. He called for his mother and told, you know, the disciples to take care of her. Right? Mm hmm there's a bigger picture in that because Jesus, they say he died at what? 33, I think. Was it 33? But, uh, so let's say his mom had to be 45, 50 something. 
Now, I don't want you to compare the 50 year old to today's 50 year old. <laughs> so, Please. we're talking about the 50 year old back then. Please. It's like a, it's like an 80 year old now problem. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So, he's basically telling people take care of her, look out for her. Jesus being the older son, he still played that role as an older son and was respectful. But all in all, man, his purpose came before his mom and his brothers. And that's just what it is. Mm. That's what it is. And a lot of people can accept that. And a lot of people can't do that. And so until you're able to do that, man, you're going to have to keep repeating lessons and doing this thing over. So have you always felt that way about... No, it it, it wasn't rooted in purpose. Mm -hmm. It wasn't rooted in purpose. I didn't I didn't start like man, okay, and that's what I was saying earlier. What I was able to do uh out of uh being protective of myself or out of hurt, right? Or out of dysfunction, cutting off people out of dysfunction or hurt. Yeah. It turned into something positive as right. I got older right. and something righteous. Mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Like no matter that's another topic, but no matter what you're going through, what what you experience, uh, man, abuse, molestation, uh, uh, what else? Abandonment, uh, being picked on, whatever the case, man, uh, drug addiction, uh, parents on drugs, whatever the case is. What was meant for bad or meant for evil can be flipped and be used in regards to righteousness. Right. It's all about perspective. It's mm -hmm. all about mindset. That's the bottom line. Yeah, so initially, no, this wasn't about no purpose why I was able to cut off people. Yeah, that was out of some childhood issues, out of protecting myself. But as I got older... And was doing things uh, in pursuit of my purpose, and uh, just uh, rooted in righteousness. It's like, damn, this, you know, I can cut off people, right, right. but it's for the right reasons right, now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's what that is. That makes sense. Yeah. Anything else? Well, We're gonna work on that. We're gonna work on that cutting off that Dr. Pepper. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. He just gonna. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes. Wow. Okay. So you, so, so you put me on camera. I'm just saying. So that makes it even say more man, challenging. Say so man. I got to live up to it now, right? Hey, no. That, <laughs> yes, that, I that, do. That, that Dr. Pepper, yes, that's, that's, that's like crack. <laughs> Dr. Pepper's crack. Well, be they got stuff on TikTok got... about people drinking Dr. Pepper. Oh, <laughs> Dr. Pepper, wake it up. <laughs> <laughs> man. Really? That's some strong stuff. No, I just put my business up. Hey, it's, it's people watching this. <laughs> I just made a video today about hey your insecurities is your superpower. <laughs> yeah, so we ain't no secrets. Hey, anything else? No. I'm gonna stop before you let something else happen. Nah, we good. Nah, I'm nice. We're good. Say hey, as usual, from us to you, love, peace. peace.